but we talk about indeterminate problems. And that can be because there are too many uh, elements in a, in a structure, right? Or, or can be uh, coming from a misfit or come from a thermal uh, expansion, right? Uh, so you already tried the homeworks, right? Uh, how do you feel about the homeworks for indeterminate problem? Are they hard? Okay, yeah, I expect it will be hard, all right? So it's normal, it's hard. So therefore, put a little bit more effort. Just not do the, not only the homework that I assigned to you. My suggestion is do a few more outside the homework, okay? Uh, actually, we can go over uh, more examples of homework problems today. Uh, but at first, I want to uh, continue talk about uh, the stress on inclined surface. So that's what we uh, are supposed to cover today. Okay, so we'll cover some of the concept, concept here, and then we'll go back. We'll, I think we'll have some time. We can talk about homework problems. All right. So uh, in this chapter, we have been looking at uh, you know, when you have an element, right, like our X, we call actually loaded members. So when you have a bar that under actual load, right, and we talk about how they deform. And then if there are a couple of, a group of bars can be an indeterminate problem, then you find it. Uh, use fat.com, that's basically the trick. Okay, now, Let's look in back, a step back. Look at the indi one individual bar. Go back to the basic problem again. Right? If you have a bar, as shown here, that the end the actual load. Now, we ask the second question. Remember, first we ask mainly about how it deform. Now, the second question will be the stress. Okay. How do you determine the stress in a bar? If it's, you know the load, the internal load, we call it N, right? So what's the equation? N over A, pretty easy, right? So you calculate stress. Now, if we look at into detail, look into this bar here, okay? So if I make this bigger, so this is the bar, I just draw it bigger, right? So if I make a cut here, now, on this surface, what kind of stress do you have? Normal stress, right? So the value will be calculated by this value, okay? So now this normal stress, is it like this? Pretty much uniform everywhere, right? Because we assume it's a long bar, the cross-section is small. So the load kind of di uh, distribute pretty uniformly on the cross-section, right? So we have this uniform distribution. Okay. Of course, if you look at this edge here, if you look at this location here, it won't be uniform, right? But if I look at it away from this edge, from this range, and then the stress will be pretty uniform. Right? Okay, so this actually calls the Venom uh, principle. Basically it says, when you have a load there, applying locally at this location, where you apply the load, this force can be very not uniform. But away from that location, it will kind of get uniform line. It's normally one diameter away from where you're applying the load. It will be pretty uniform. And in this class, we always assume that one diameter distance is ignorable. So we ignore that small uh, difference. For example, if you have a bar like this, right, you're applying load here. We know this part not going to be uniform. And also this part not going to be uniform right, in this area. It's not going to be uniform. But we kind of ignore this area. We assume this area is very tiny. So when we do the calculations, we just assume uniform everywhere. So we just ignore that part. Right. Okay, so now, whenever you cut it, is it cut here or cut here? It's look like this one here. Right? So the stress will be uniform. Okay, so that's the kind of uh, concept we need to establish. When you cut a cross section in a long bar that, and the actual load, the stress will be uniform, pretty much everywhere, right? Okay, what if I cut here? So this part is stress sigma, right, on the cross-section, everywhere. What if I cut here? It will be the same, because the N here is the same, based on equation of equilibrium. Or if you cut here, or here. So 
in general, within a bar, a uniform bar, the stress is always uniform. Every point, it will be the same. Okay, so that's the concept we need to set up in a uniform bar. Of course, if you look at this one, okay, the stress here will be sigma 1. If you look at here, the stress will be sigma 2. In general, are this sigma 1 and the sigma 2 equal? Are sigma 1 and the sigma 2 equal in this case? No, it's not, because the, you calculate sigma 1 is the n actually that equal to p over a1, and then your sigma 2 will be p over a2, so they won't be equal. But if you look at this cross-section here, within this range, it's everywhere the same. And then with this range, it's everywhere the same. Right? Just have two different values. But each uniform bar, the stress always uniform everywhere. Okay. So that's the first concept, how the stress distribute. You have a map, kind of visual image should set up in your head. Okay. Now, the next question we want to look at this today is, Okay, what if I have this bar here? Okay. Instead of cutting perpendicular cross section, what if I cut this way? What kind of stress you would you have on this surface? First, what kind of force would you have on this surface? Okay, let's draw a free body diagram, right? Then we figure out what's the force. Okay, so when you draw it, I draw the right part, uh, left part of this one. So I just draw it right here, copy it down. So this is the surface I cut. Now, if I apply load P here, what's the reaction here? It will be equal to P, right? So this is the P, and this, you should say R equals P. The reaction equals the load. Right. Okay, now, what kind of, if you cut on this inclined surface, an angle to the actual direction, that's called inclined surface. Okay, now, on this surface, what kind of force would you have? Let's say, actually, let me use, uh, not using the end. I'll just use, in general, I don't know the direction yet, so I just use the letter F. Okay, what kind of force I would have on this surface? Normal? Okay, what's a normal force? Normal means perpendicular to the surface, right? Okay, is this force perpendicular to the surface? This force. Is this part perpendicular? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. How would you find out? Equation of equilibrium, right? So with the equation of equilibrium, we can find out what's this F direction and the value. Right? So, what do you use? Sigma fx is supposed to be zero. Sigma fy also has to be zero. Okay, where is your x and where is your y? So, can I call this x direction? And this will be the y direction. Right? Now, what's the sigma fx equal zero? For this free body diagram. Should it be f projected to the Horizontal direction, right? So that would be like a cosine angle. So let's call this angle here alpha. So cosine alpha, right? Then, what else? P equals zero. All right? Okay, we, do we know the angle alpha? Yes, when you cut the section, you say, I'm going to cut 45 degree here. Figure out what's the force there. I cut 30 degree, what's the force there? So basically, you know this direction where you're cutting. So you know alpha. Okay. So then you can find alpha. All right. Now, what about the other equation? Sigma Fy equals zero. So you should have F sine alpha, right? Anything else in the y direction? Nothing else equals zero. What does that mean? That means, 
Well, f has to be 0. Or f cosine or f sine alpha to be 0. Right? OK, what's f sine alpha? If you look at the f here, let me change it to, uh, back to black. OK, so f is here. So the f, you can do two projections. Right? So this will be the f times cosine alpha. This will be the f times sine alpha. Right? OK, now f sine alpha has to be 0. What's the solution? f equals 0. No force. Can that be possible? No. OK, what about sine alpha to be 0? What's that mean? That means alpha has to be 0. Right? What's that mean? That means your force f has to be in the actual direction. Right? Otherwise, this equation of equilibrium cannot satisfy. Right? So based on that, your force on the surface must be horizontal. OK, so this will be the actual case. So you have this, you cut it here. This is the surface you cut. All right. Now, this has to be 0. So your force here, F, is this direction. Here is your load, R equals P. So the full reaction force, even you cut on inclined direction, an angle, the force, resulting force, has to be in the horizontal direction. OK. You all agree now? The force has to be in the x direction. Because it balances the other one, R equals P, on the other side. OK, so we find out the force on this one. So what's the value of the force? F equals what? Equals P. So we know the value has to be equal to P because the balance also the direction has to be in the x direction. OK, now when you have a surface like this, right? you have a force applied there. It's neither parallel to the surface, either perpendicular to the surface. Because this one, let's say, if we draw this surface normal here, okay. So the surface is normal, then this angle I can call it the theta, right? Because the surface is normal, that's normal to the surface. The surface I just cut, and you have the surface normal direction, okay. So now this f is not along this no surface normal direction. We just know, right? It has to be horizontal, okay. Now. When you have a surface like this, okay, you have a force applying here. Okay, what's the effect on the surface? Can we divide the force into two components? One's here, one's here. So this is the force actually equal to P. Can we divide into two components? Yeah, you can always divide into two components, right? Okay, now when you do that, then this component it's normal to the surface. We call it normal stress, a normal force, right? So we use N. Now, what about this component? It will be shear, so we call it V. So, in other words, when you cut on in, an inclined surface, then this actual load member is going to have two forces on this surface. One is normal, we call N. Another one is parallel, and that's a shear force, V. Do you all agree this, there will be two forces on this, right? One normal, one uh, parallel. OK, now, can you find out these two components? Yes? OK, so what's V? P times something. Cosine alpha or sine alpha? I mean, cosine theta or sine theta. Sine theta, right? So sine theta. Okay. Now, what about the, the n? Cosine theta. Okay. So we find out the normal force component and also the shear force component. Okay. Now, when you have a force applying normally to a surface, what kind of stress is going to generate? Normal stress. Okay. So now, what's the normal stress that you generate? at this theta direction, or on this surface. 
Right? We'll talk about this surface. We talk about this surface here. Okay, what's the uh, stress? How do you calculate the stress? Should it be because we're talking about normal stress, right? So it should be the normal force. That's the A. Right? Over the area. What's the area? Is this equal to cross section? No, we see there. Visually, you see it's different. It's bigger. Right? So we call this surface, let's just say A theta. We'll find out what it is later on, right? I can just call it, give a name first, call A theta. Okay, so then sigma theta will be equal to that. Okay, now what's the tau theta? On this surface, there will be shear stress, right? Okay, so let me jump back to here on the screen. You see there, right? You're going to have two components. One is the sigma theta, one is the shear theta. Okay. Let's go back here. Okay, what's the tau theta then? Shear stress. Should that be V over A or A theta? A theta. Okay. And remember, this is A. So this will be A theta here. Okay. So to find out these two stresses, I know there will be two stresses, sigma theta, tau theta. To find out these two stresses, I already know A and V. So what I need will be find out the A theta. Okay, what's the relation between A theta and the A? It's like when you have a when you have a surface, right? Okay, so this is a, this you call the inclined surface, right? Okay, imagine you are going upward. So w the projection here, this will be the cross section. Now, what's the relation between the cross sectional area and this inclined area? What's the relation between these two? Let me draw one here. So basically, this is the A theta, right? And then this will be the bar. So here is A. We know this is A, and this is A theta. Now, what's this angle? What's this angle? Which one is theta? Remember, here, this is a any direction, right? Surface normal direction. And this angle is theta. Now, what about this angle? This is a theta. Okay, now what's the relation between A and A theta? They form a cosine relation, right? Okay, so I can just write this way. So A is supposed to equal to A theta times cosine theta. Is that true? Right? Okay, if you accept this projection, right? It's like you have a, you put a beam of light, you go this way, then the projection of A theta will be A. Okay, so that's the cosine theta. Yeah, so this gives you A. But can you use this equation to find out A theta if you know A? Yeah, so you can just put it there. So this gives us A theta equals to A over cosine theta, right? Okay, now can I put everything, the A theta and the A and the V into these equations? Okay, let's do one, right? Try a, a sigma theta, then you can do the tau theta one. Okay, let's put it in here. So, for example, sigma theta will be A. What's A? It's P cosine theta. Okay, what's A theta? That's A over cosine theta. Okay, so what this... Simplify it. So you're going to have a P over A, then cosine theta squared. Right? Okay, what's P over A? That's the stress we know we talk about, right? We used to talk about. That's in this on the cross section. So and that is the sigma we talk about, then cosine square theta. Okay, to distinguish between this sigma here and the sigma theta we talk about, so we can call this sigma x direction. Or you can say theta zero. When theta, when the angle is zero, you get this. Right? You can call it the sigma x or sigma zero. OK. 
Okay. So we have this relation. In other words, when you rotate your direction, if you cut the inclined surface, then on that surface, this normal stress, sigma theta, going to be calculated with this relation. The original one times the cosine square. Now, what about tau theta? So be P is N, uh, is V, right? V equals P sine theta, and then over A cosine theta. Simplify, will give you sigma x sine theta cosine theta. Right? This is a mathematical organize it, simplify. Okay, now. If you look at the textbook, they give you a negative sign here, actually. They, they give you a negative sign. Okay, why do they give you a negative? I'm getting a positive here. The direction, the sign convention. Okay, see here, if you look at this, uh, uh, let's go back to the PC here. Okay, this is our sign convention. All right, so normal stress. It's away from the surface, always positive. Basic tension, that's positive. So we still have the same. Now for shear, okay, they define positive direction as from the normal, you rotate counterclockwise, 90 degree, and that direction is positive. In other words, we have this, when you go upward, the, as I showed there, T theta, that's the tau theta. So this is a positive direction. Okay, now if you look at the, what am I sign convention here? What I'm assuming is Okay, see here, in this graph, this figure here. So I'm using V point this way. So that's why I have a positive value, they show a negative one. So basically, I'm not using the sign convention they gave there, right? So if you use the standard sign convention, you just give a negative sign, that's why, all right? Okay, so in summary, the equation, the relation actually very simple. So you have these two equations. Sigma theta will be sigma x cosine square theta. And then the tau theta will be negative sigma x sine theta cosine theta. Right? So later on, when you try to calculate stress in any direction, when you know the theta, you just plug into this equation. You don't need to go through this process anymore, because this is the process we just derived help you understand how we get here. But when you use it, just plug the equation. So in other words, put this in on your formula sheet, just start from here, calculate the stress. All right. Okay, so we can stop here, but I want to mention here, uh, one quick question is, want to get the feeling, okay, when you change the theta from zero to, let's say, 90 degree, how does these values are it changes. How do the values change? It's a cosine sine square, right? Hard to plot. So we can actually change this slightly. So you can change this one to, okay, sigma x. What's cosine theta square? You remember that trigonometry equation? Half one plus cosine two theta, right? Okay, now, what about this one? So it'll be negative sigma x times half sine two theta. So sine two theta equals twice sine theta times cosine theta. Right, this is just from trigonometry. If you don't remember it, assume I'm correct, all right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with this, you change now to two theta, two theta. So now it's a linear relation, you can plot it. Right. So actually, uh, in the textbook, they have the plot. Uh, I believe it. I have it here as well. So let's say it. Next slide, and this gives the equation. Uh, I think I should have the plot here. Let me check it. Double check it. Okay, I don't have it here. So now let's go back. We can. We can plot it. Okay, so we can plot it. 
because we have this equation here, right? Okay, so we can plot the first, we can plot tau theta, for example. Okay, when you have, when theta is zero. Okay, when theta is zero, what's tau theta? When theta is zero, what's theta? Zero, right? Okay, now, when this maximum, sine two theta equals this, this is the maximum. What's the maximum of a sine angle? It's one, right? When that angle equals 90 degree, that means when theta equals 45, right? So here is 45 degree, and here is 90 degree. Okay, 45 degree maximum. So you have something like this. That's the tau theta, right? Okay, now what about cosine theta? I mean this sigma theta, this one, this equation. When this smallest, when theta equals zero, what's this value? Sigma x, right? So this is sigma x. So when it's zero, it's one. And then when it's, uh, theta is uh, 45 degree, this will be cosine 90, right? Cosine 90 is what? Zero. zero. Okay, so it'll be, what's the value? One half. So you have something like this. Right? Okay, now, what if theta equals 180? And theta equals 90? Cosine 180 is what? Negative one. So you go negative one, so it goes to zero. So you go move here. So what do you have? Let me just draw it with a black pen. So what do you all have? The curve will be like this, and then go up. All right, so that's the sigma theta. Okay, then this one, the red one, this is the tau theta. Okay, you can check the textbook. They give you nice, better drawing than my uh, hand drawing. Okay, but the trend is this. So what we see here is the sine theta, uh, sigma theta, and the cosine, that's the uh, tau theta. So both sigma theta and the tau theta, they're changing when you cut different directions. Okay. There is a special direction. That is when theta equals 45 degree. Okay, what's special of this, this direction? The tau theta is maximum, right? Take the maximum. Okay, what's the value? What's the maximum of tau theta? Yeah, what's the value? E equals sigma x, or in value, or negative or positive, right? So that's the maximum. I mean, in value, there is a maximum. Okay, so here is a strange concept. Okay, when you have a bar, you stretch it. If you cut a cross section, there's only normal stress. But now if you cut it an angle, then you're going to have both normal stress and shear stress. So in a bar you are stretching, there is shear stress in the bar. It just depends on how you look at it. If you cut the angle, there will be stress will show up. If you actually cut 45 degree, this shear stress actually takes the maximum. Right? So if I give you a bar and the extra load, ask you what's the maximum shear stress. So never give me a say it's a zero, because it's not. Because if you cut an angle, there will be shear stress. And if you cut 45 degree, the value is actually equal to the normal stress. All right? So in a bar, there will be both normal stress and the shear stress. Yes? It only exists on inclined direction. If you cut a direction that's not along the axis. If you cut perpendicular, you only have normal stress. Right? That's what we just uh, learned before today. Okay, now today we know if you don't cut perpendicular, then you're going to have shear stress. But if I just generally ask you, is there a shear stress in a bar and the actual load? Your answer should be yes, because when you cut, right? you're going to see shear stress, all right? 
Okay, so this concept actually uh, in lots of uh, analysis you need to depend on both the shear and normal. Okay, for some materials they fail because you have too much tension Be between the particles of the material. They fail because they pull each other away. Okay, so that's they fail by normal stress. For some materials they are very strong when you try to pull the particles apart, but they are very weak when you try to slide between the particles. That means when you have shear. And for that kind of material, when you're going to apply a load, okay, you're going to fail differently. Actually, right. Okay, so here is a picture of things fail because of shear. Okay, when you have a material like a chalk, if you step, put a, a, a bar of chalk. And if you put pressure on it, you use a hammer, for example, you just knock on it, you'll find out it won't break uh, perpendicular. It actually breaks along a certain line. That's because for the chalk or for wood, when you press on it, the sh it's weak against the shear. So it fail because the shear is big enough. And so that's why when you fail, it actually fail 45 degree angle. Okay, why 45 degree angle? Because that's the direction, right? When you have axial load, 45 degree, that's the direction you're going to have maximum shear. The direction shear reach maximum. That's why I fail 45 degree. Right? So later on, if you become a scientist, diagnosis say there is a failure structure, right? You go there to a forensic, a forensic uh, analysis. You want to figure out what's the reason why this bridge fail, why this part fail. If you find, okay, the fail 45 degree, that means somehow the shear stress was too high. So you can see why it failed afterward, right? So that's why you can do uh, forensic analysis. Yeah. All right? Okay, so that's the basic content I want to cover today. Any questions? All right, any questions? No? Okay, if not, yeah, you have a question. Uh, show all the, the quizzes are. Like the correct answer, I didn't plan on show the quizzes, but you have, so now basically the time. You have questions about the quiz or homework. Okay, anything you can bring up, I can uh, help solve it here or answer it. Yeah, you should be able to see it. I think when after the due date, you should be able to see it. The, the, yeah, you should be able to see what, what's there. Yeah. Okay. Any questions about the indeterminate problems? You already give a try, so you know where the challenge is. Any problem you want to bring up here, we can talk. We have about uh, 10, 15 minutes. We can talk about. Or you all finish all the indeterminate? No problem. One thing I want to uh, emphasize is, for some of the homework, they say use the answer from the example and then solve your problem. Okay, I put a uh, process there. Don't use that. You need to start with FED.com. The reason is, okay, not very special case from the example. It's not necessarily apply to the exam problems. That's one. Okay, second, if you just use their result without knowing how they get it, and not actually not helpful for you to learn. Just plug in their equation, put the number there. Why you need that? No, high school, middle school, even elementary school kids can do that, right? Just put the number there, calculate. So you basically you need to learn the process, how you solve it. That's why don't use their formula, okay? Because they have very limited situation, you can only use that form. That's not the standard equation. I won't provide that when we have the exam. Right? So basically it's not, will be on the formula sheet. Okay. All right, any questions about the indeterminate problems? No, you're, you're good? Yes. Which one? Give me one, which one you feel difficult that we can bring up our uh, solution? Uh, I don't remember, what, what's the shape? Okay, you have a picture of it. I can just draw it here.
Okay, so this problem. Indeterminate problem. So here is a P1, there is a P2. Okay. All right, yeah, if you have other thing you need to leave, that's fine. Basically, I'll go over this problem. Okay, so you know load P1, P2, right? I guess what they're asking you will be either reactions at this end, RA, RB, or the internal forces or the stresses, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, or how much this point going to move. The question can be this will be delta, how much it equal to. There are only the three type of questions they can ask you, right? Okay, so how do you solve this problem? What's the basic equation you can lay down? Doesn't matter how they ask you questions. It's the fair outcome, right? You lay out, that's the basic equations. Okay, so free body diagram. Okay, you want to find out N1, N2, and N3. So you need to draw the free body diagram. Okay, for example, if I draw this part. Okay, so you have N2 here, N1 here, and this load P1 is here. Now, what's the equation of equilibrium? Equation of equilibrium for this free body diagram. Minus N1 plus N2 plus P1 equals zero. Right? Okay, similarly, you can draw this part, free body diagram, other free body. So you can write all the equations out. Okay, can we make the cut? Write down the equation of equilibrium. Is this step challenging? No, this is okay, right? So I'll skip this one. Now, the next step, so this is actually the step two, right? So the free body diagram, that's step one. And then equation of equilibrium, that's step two. I assume you can all do it. Then the third step is a deformation. Is this, this part easy? Right? Relatively easy, because you only have three elongations. The other one will be N1, L1, E1, A1. You don't even need to look. Just say, the other two, N2, L2, E2, A2. Then the other three will be N3, L3, E3, A3. So you just like very mechanically copy, right? So this is, okay, now the first part, that's the compatibility part. This is the most challenging part. So what's the compatibility for this problem? Compatibility means the relation between your delta one, delta two, delta three, or maybe delta four, delta five. All these definitions, how they agree to each other, how they match each other, how they comply to each other, or how they compatible to each other. Okay, what's the relation? So delta one is the bar one elongation. Then delta two is the bar two elongation. Delta three is the bar three elongation. How are these three elongations? Everyone try to elongate a little bit. How much you can, they can elongate in total? Zero. So that's the compatibility. That's it. All right. Once you have this, then combine with the other equations. Mathematically, you solve it, you'll get everything. Right. So the easy way is I don't divide which one gets compressed, which one gets shrink. I just assume everyone try to uh, expand. Right? And then the total amount of expansion will be zero. That's the equation. All right.